Do you ever play your guitar and think to yourself, what can I do to have more feel? Well, with this lick I'm about to show you, you play this for a couple minutes, you will feel the difference. <laughs> If you were to ask me to sum up in one word what makes up playing with feel, that word would be subtlety. It's the little things. It's the things you don't really notice right off the bat and you can't really explain it, but you just know that there's life in what you're hearing. And if those little things were taken away, you would definitely notice the difference and not for the better. But this like I'm about to show you is chock full of those little things. So let's break it down. This is in the key of E minor. And we're gonna be using E minor pentatonic, but in different positions. Don't worry so much about what scale patterns are being used. Again, we're gonna be feeling our way through the slick. So we start with a full step bend. Bending is one of those little things. Not just bending, but how you bend, right? Uh, so starting with the 10th fret on the B string, we're gonna do a full step bend. So we're bending from here, this pitch, to this pitch. So you wanna do that bend. And here's the thing, when you do that bend, and you hit the pitch of that note you're aiming for, just hold it for a little bit and then slowly release it. Right? It's That's another subtlety right there is slowing down, right? So it's in those bends, it's hitting the, the pitch of those bends. And then just slowing down, it's, it's having command over you know, where the note is going. So we have. And as we bring it down, and the next thing we're gonna do is a very slight bend, but it's with our first finger on the eighth fret of the B string. We're gonna do a half step bend, so bending from the pitch of this note to this one. But here's the thing, that note by itself doesn't really sound that great, so you want the bend to be subtle, right? So we're doing like that, just a very slight, like once we come off of this bend, right? And, and then the way that I'm doing this bend is with my first finger, it's almost like a radial motion. So it's not straight up, right, physically. It's like I'm kind of scooping it up, right? That's just kind of the natural motion that to me flows the best, right? So we go. And then once we do that, we're gonna choke that bend, right? Because the next thing we gotta do is play the 10th fret on the B string. Right, so right now we're only just between these two frets and we already have a bunch of those little things. All right, and then once we play the 10th fret of the B string, we're gonna play with our first finger, the seventh fret of the high E string. All right, so. And then with our second finger here, we're gonna do a full step bend on the eighth fret, or sorry, the yeah, that's the eighth fret of the B string. And just like with the first bend, we're gonna we're gonna bend to the 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 pitch that we're trying to aim for, and we're just gonna slowly release it. Right, so it's almost like your guitar is like it's it's like moaning, you know. And then we come down to the ninth fret on the G string, and give that a little vibrato. Vibrato being another one of those little things, right? So if you have the type of vibrato that's a little bit more um, uh, spastic. Right? <laughs> what you want to do is almost like pretend you're in slow motion. And then just kind of exaggerate that slow up and down movement, right? Even if it sounds a little weird at first, it's just to kind of train your hand to slow down when you're doing vibrato. Because fast vibrato is great, but you know, there's a time and place. So to quickly recap on the first part of that lick, we have Now let's move on to the second half. From here, while we're hanging on the ninth fret of the G string there, we're gonna do what's called a blues bend. So this lick is gonna have a variety of different uh, types of bends in terms of their reach. We're doing some whole step bends, some half step bends, now some blues bends, which are also known as quarter step bends. So what we're doing here, we're doing the slightest bend. We're not bending a half step, right? We're not going from here to here. We're going, it's like right before it reaches the half step. And again, we want to sort of choke the string, mute the note so it doesn't, right? We're not trying to, we're not trying to sustain the note. We're just, it's very slight. So as we're, uh, once we're done uh, hanging on that uh, ninth fret there on the G string, we're going to go. So we're doing that 
that blues bend, right? Muting it and then playing the ninth fret again, like this. So this kind of lick is cool because it's like we're implying with this motion, we're implying the note that we're aiming for. Right, which is a lot more, has a lot more feel than just doing this. Very subtle, right? It's the little things. So anyway, we do that quarter step bend, then we play nine, and then we go back to seven on the G string. Then we're gonna play nine on the D string. Then we're gonna do a quarter step bend on the seventh fret of the D string. All right, so we're going. And then we're gonna play the ninth fret on the D string again. All right, and then we're playing uh, back on the seventh fret of the D string. So it's just essentially a repeated pattern across those two strings. And then from here, while we're sustaining the seventh fret of the D string, we're gonna slide down to the fifth fret, sliding being another one of those little things, also known as glissandos. Right, so it, there's just more character to that than just going, right? So we're just smoothly leading into that note. So we have. Then from here is where it gets fun. We're gonna uh, take our second finger to the sixth fret of the D string, and we're gonna do a half step bend. We're gonna bend from uh, the pitch of this note to this one. But it's gonna be very quick. So once we do it, we're gonna end it with actually playing the note on the fret of the pitch that we're, we're going towards, right? So we're gonna be playing the seventh fret of the D string. So it's like this. It's just like those implying notes, right? But we're getting a little bit closer in pitch, so the subtlety is way more at play here. So we're gonna do this three times. One, two, three. All right, just repeating another one of those subtleties. If you think about some of the best like blues players, right? It's all about repetition, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like boring, right? It's repeated, but it's just done with such mojo because it's all about those subtleties, right? So we do that three times. Let's just recap real quick, starting from the ninth fret of the G string. So we're going. All right, so there's a lot of those. And with a, a move like that, when you're, when you're repeating a lick like that, you can also experiment with different uh, picking dynamics, right? You can play it hard, or you can play it soft, or you can do a little bit of both. I, I like to kind of do like starting off a little hard and then, you know, bringing it down a little bit. All right, and then even slowing it down too, like, you know, again, little things, I'm telling you. Uh, and then once we do that, once we've done that the third time, we're gonna do a quarter step bend, uh, uh, a blues bend, right? On the uh, fifth fret of the D string, right? Remember, not a half step bend, quarter step bend. Now, again, the, um, the distance, right, between a quarter step and a half step bend may seem like it's negligible, but I'm telling you, this is where the feel lies, is knowing kind of where to kind of end the bend, right? Because it's it's not much, but it, it's noticeable enough. And of course, there's a certain attitude with blues bends that half step bends don't really have, in my opinion. So we're doing that ha that quarter step bend from the fifth fret of the D string, and then we're going to end it with the uh, seventh fret on the A string, and just let that ring. Give that that slow motion vibrato, and you're done. Let's recap on this lick. I'm going to play it nice and slow, which it sounds great played slow, by the way, because having control over your speed happens to be another one of those subtleties. And then, of course, I'll play it at a quicker tempo. So with this one, I do like to play the open E string first just to kind of set the stage, you know, so. Here it is a little faster. Yeah. Now if you dedicate just a couple minutes into a lick like this, you'll really start to live in these little subtleties. And even if they don't come naturally to you at first, which they likely won't, they definitely didn't for me, I had to work for it, you know? 
But in just that small amount of time, thinking about what I need to do, right? Uh, thinking about the, uh, the pitch that I'm aiming for with the bends and trying out different things like the picking dynamics, slowing things down, making it a little bit more free form. You know, we don't have to play this to a metronome. So it really doesn't matter. You can play it as fast or as slow as you want because if you're playing it with feel, tempo almost doesn't even matter. So you've just been given a totally tasty lick that is chock full of feel. And all you gotta do is dedicate a couple minutes to really getting the feel down. Of course, it's addictive enough in my opinion that I'll spend all day on it if I want to. But anyway, I digress. I want you to be able to apply the things that you learned today to soloing in general. And that's why I'm giving you a free blue solo heat map. This has helped thousands of guitar players learn how to play red hot blazing blue solos all over that dang fretboard. So be sure to click here to claim your copy or check the link in the description box. And if you enjoyed this lesson, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and be sure to check out our other relevant lessons right over here. I wanna thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. I'm Eddie with Guitar Mastery Method and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.